Howdy neighbor, how is your garden growing? My garden, well, it's a little bit crazy. It's a little bit mess. We could even say it's a little bit wild. Today, we're gonna be starting our backyard vegetable garden. Well, actually, we're changing our backyard vegetable. We're resetting it kind of starting in a way, but there was technically a vegetable garden there before. If you guys remember at the beginning of this year, we started a new vegetable garden back there, an in-ground vegetable garden. And the reason was is that I wasn't really sure how vegetables were gonna grow back there. Was it gonna be too sunny? Was it gonna be too shady? And as the sun moves around for the year, would that space continue to work throughout the different seasons? So while I like doing raised beds, especially because Miss Shiloh loves to run through those beds and so do the armadillos and Mr. Bunny and Mrs. Possum. They all like to just which is okay once the veggies are a bit bigger but when they're tiny seedlings. But the thing is is when it comes to raised beds once you put them in they're kind of well it's not easy to move them. I wanted to get to know the space without investing a lot of money not having to worry about having to pull stuff apart and move tons of soil. We did an in-ground bed and it actually worked really well. So well that like the majority of our vegetables came from that backyard vegetable garden. So with that in mind, I was ready to start designing a new vegetable garden that could be more permanent for the area, be a little bit less wild, a little bit more contained and still be really, really productive and aesthetically pleasing. I got to designing in my handy dandy planner, this vegetable garden. So this is what we wanna go and do is put in five raised beds, four little L shapes and then a circle in the middle. And then we're gonna have the original trellis that I built beginning of this year back here. And what's cool about this is it basically fits in the same space that we had used for the in-ground beds without actually having to expand too much further. And it gives us about equal amount of growing space. It's really cool because you might look at this and think, wow, there's like a lot of space around this. But before we can start working on this, we have to go ahead and take out what's left of our in-ground veggies. So that's what we're gonna be doing first. We're gonna go and get some eggplants and peppers and I think some basil too. From these things we're going to be making things like baba ganoush which i love putting them inside some nice mediterranean style pitas falafel pitas yum 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 the peppers the majority of them are going to be put into pepper bean salad really yummy if you've got lots of peppers you got lots of beans very refreshing dish very healthy feeling but filling and while we have a ton of fresh basil the majority of it's going to get dried out and it's going to last us probably for the next year or two for dried basil the last thing that we're going to be doing with this harvest is i'm actually pulling out the seeds from those ping tong eggplants and i'm going to be pulling out the seeds from some of the peppers so that i can plant them and use some of those pepper seeds like <laughs> jalapenos and the banana peppers to replant for my fall vegetable garden so as i was harvesting you probably noticed there is a ton of weeds like an insane amount of weeds and it's actually not a bunch of different weeds it's just one type of weed that is torpedo grass 
Torpedo grass, it ends up in people's lawns for all different reasons, but a main reason when you live in an urban and suburban area is it usually was brought in by your lawn maintenance company. If they have extra bits on their blades and their equipment from one yard that is contaminated, they can easily bring it into your yard and then you have it. And when it's an area that's mowed, it's really not noticeable other than you might notice that it has like a, that area has like a little bit of a bluish tint to it, or you'll notice that the grass is a lot finer than our St. Augustine grass. But it is a very problematic plant and it is very, 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 very hard to remove. This is considered one of the world's most invasive species. <laughs> There's a dusky skipper on the camera. <laughs> I don't think you guys can see it. But what we're gonna be doing today in order to knock this torpedo grass back is we're gonna be using fresh, hot cooking mulch <laughs> to knock it down. And while the hot mulch will knock it back, it's not going to kill it off. This torpedo grass is so aggressive, it will get up and through it, but it will knock it back so we won't have to treat the entire space. We can kind of just focus on the areas where it is getting through. So, yay. But that means that we get to do one of Jacqueline's favorite activities to do in the high heat of summer and fall. That's move mulch. We're moving mulch. <laughs> so much mulch. This is how, I think I've said it before, and I'll say it again. It's how you get the muscles. It's how you keep yourself young and vital and... <laughs> There's so much mulch. And as we were moving the mulch, I started to get worried that we wouldn't have enough mulch, which is actually kind of crazy with how much mulch we had and how much space we're covering, that there wouldn't be enough. <laughs> so I don't know how much of this is shown in the video because I just, look, it's really hot and the sun's super intense. So I was just like, let's just set up the camera and let's get it going. And I'm pretty sure I didn't capture this part of it, which is the fact, and here's the thing about the torpedo grass is well, I'm not a fan of it. And the clear reality is, is it hates me. Oh, Jacqueline, how can this invasive species hate you? Why would you even say that? Look, I'm telling you, when I was moving that mulch, I started to feel like a burning sensation on my legs. Like almost like if you got razor burn and then you put alcohol on it, except I felt it everywhere from knee down. 
And as I kept moving the mulch and I was stepping through the torpedo grass, at first I thought like, did I get stung by something? Am I getting bitten by something? I realized that the torpedo grass, you would start seeing almost look like cat scratches, like a cat just like all over my leg. And I realized I was having some sort of reaction to torpedo grass, which is crazy because here's the thing. I have done so much research on torpedo grass, like from university studies to people's like my, my friends in the Florida native gardening Facebook groups, like all the people who have removed it in all the different ways. I've read up on this thing so much. No one has talked about it doing this. So I didn't think about it until I just started to realize it's coming from the torpedo grass. I, I'm having some sort of reaction to torpedo grass. Let me show you this. This is like a week later. You look like you can see like I have all these scratches over my legs. No, they are like a chemical burn that happened all over my leg from this torpedo grass. Am I saying this will happen to you? No, because I haven't heard anyone else have this problem. It apparently is a me problem. And I think just like the native plants and wildlife are like, yeah, Jacqueline, you're helping us. This invasive species was like, I see you. I hear you talking about invasive species. So I'm gonna get you first. I think that's what happened here. So if you ever have an overgrown torpedo grass or you have it just as like in your grass, like watch out for this. You might be one of the unlucky 0.001% who get like these chemical reactions to it. It was the weirdest thing. It wasn't itchy at all. Oh, it just burned so bad. I gave Ben the heads up so he didn't really go through it. So we didn't see if he had a reaction also. I was moving mulch for about a half hour or hour before he got out there because what he was doing in the beginning was actually working on trimming back shrubbery, not here, <laughs> but along the sidewalk to make sure it was like really easy for us to move in and out. When you had to move mulch a million times, every little bit of inconvenience is a hundredfold, a thousandfold. So getting the plants off the sidewalk, making sure like the tires are pumped up on the yard car, all these little things. And we were able to move this mulch way faster than we have in other projects because Mr. Cliff was so kind and loaned us his yard cart. So we had two yard carts going at once, which meant like we, we were making progress. It was going fast. I mean, it still took like four to six hours, but it moved way faster than what would typically happen, getting all that mulch from the driveway all the way to the back of the yard. This, this garden is like truly the definition of the difference between Ben and I. You can see I'm getting across this area much faster than him, but he, he he's like, it's the details, right? Not one blade of grass coming through. Not one bit showing. Lo lovely edges. But then my side, <laughs> we have some, must have some challenging spots here and Maybe a little bit of grass peeking through over here and maybe not quite as deep and it's very lumpy, which might not be very obvious, but that's the difference. So you can be, so you can be faster. That doesn't mean that's better. <laughs> this is why we pair well together. But six hours in summer sun is miserable and wasn't as bad as it could have been because we actually did get some nice storms. And unlike typical summer storms, these weren't thunderstorms. These were actually like light sprinkling storms. So we would maybe step into the garage for like a couple minutes, get some electrolytes, but we didn't have to worry about lightning and thunder, which was great because typically this time of year, like as soon as you see rain and thunder, you're like, you're like, we're done. This is it, can't do much. But we were able to actually keep moving. And it was just like, kind of like a, a night like misting for us. Singing in the rain. <laughs> so hours and hours have gone by and we are finally done moving mulch. 
And honestly, I feel like we could have used more mulch. I feel like my side was a lot thinner. Well, we already talked about it. I was thinner and lumpier and Ben's was much deeper, but I feel like it, yeah. So as much raking as I could do to kind of even it out, I did, but I still feel like we probably could have used more just to knock back that torpedo grass. And I felt like there were some areas that the torpedo grass only has to grow like this much just because of the way I don't know if that makes sense, but like just the way everything kind of laid down together, I just feel like it's gonna pop up through in a couple spots pretty easily. So we'll just be monitoring that so that we can like knock it out. And now that we've done, what was it, six hours of work? But all we did, we didn't get the beds done. We just made it, all we did was made a giant square out of mulch. Almost a whole day of work and it's just a giant square of mulch. What we did is we then used the following weekend to start putting together our five raised beds. And Ben and I became quite pros at these things. We had like a whole system going on. So we actually, it took us about for five beds. Uh, so in total for those five beds, it probably took us about four hours to put together. A little bit longer than just doing a straight rectangle one like I did before. I think this one took about 30, 40 minutes when we originally did it. But those L shapes had a little bit more steps to do, which was really clear in their manual. The manual was super easy. I'm very clear about like what you were supposed to do. It's just, it took time. So, So, four hours, beds are put together, and we're getting a whole lot closer to this wonderful, beautiful vision. I am so excited. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited for this garden. What are you guys excited about right now? I get inspired, I need to know. I need more gardening projects that are starting right now. Tell me about yours. I'm loving the way this is looking. I'm loving the contrast of the brown mulch versus the cream beds versus all the greenery behind it. I feel like it's just gonna really, once we get them full with veggies, it's just gonna really be this like beautiful focal point in our backyard garden. And I'm just really excited about it. But honestly, this is just the beginning. This is just the bones of this project. We still have a lot of work to do from filling these beds to planting out our seedlings to, I don't know, we got a lot to do in the backyard. <laughs> and if you were thinking, hey, those beds look pretty good, 
and I think I might want to put them in my yard. Go ahead and check out this video on the one year review and see if they're the right kind of fit for your garden. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye!